What's going on guys? This is Martyrs Brigade 99 coming to you once again with another session of Dark Souls PvP. Alright guys, we're back at it for a Battle of the Build series. And this will feature myself versus Rikyu's uh, Ichigo Kurosaki build. Now, for any of you guys that are familiar with the anime series Bleach, you may be a lot more familiar with this build than I am. Because, you know, I haven't really watched any anime. Um, you know, I'm not really a part of the anime watching culture. Right? But from what I have heard, it is, very, it is a very popular series. Right? So this particular build is dedicated to it. Now, this is a... This, this build is pretty difficult to fight against. Mainly because not only does he do a lot of charge attacks, which, I mean, I do kind of see people do charge attacks, but not as often or as well as he does. Uh, one thing about him with regards to this build, he is not doing, um, actually I can't say he's not doing. He may do a few lock-on charge attacks, but he's also doing a lot of unlock charge attacks. And for any of you guys that have may uh, use this particular weapon, you would know that um, not only do the charge attacks have a beam, right? But if you shoot it at the ground, or if you just so happen to be close to where the uh, user is, and the shot is fired at the ground, it also has kind of like a blast or a burst effect, right? So even if you don't get hit directly by the beam, you can get hit by the burst or blast. You guys notice that? Kind of like a dome-like effect? Because in a lot of these cases, I actually, I'm not really even getting hit by the beam. I'm receiving damage from the magical burst attack. Right, so this is definitely a difficult build to play against. Now, I have fought this build a number of times in the past. And I remember the very last time that I fought the build, I was kind of getting to the point to where I was parrying the charge attack. And actually, I was hoping that I would be able to do it this time. But I think he has definitely uh, tightened up on his tactics and his strategies. Thus making it a lot more difficult for me to be successful at parrying those attacks. Now, let's talk about patterns. With regard to patterns, you guys notice that? He's doing a lot of random, you know, left and right and straight R2 attacks. Now, uh, in addition to him using the Moonlight Greatsword, he also uses the Chaos Blade. You guys notice that? He oftentimes switches directions. One thing that I noticed about his tactics during the time that we were fighting these matches, he is paying close attention to my patterns, right? Because, and a lot of the times that he'll shoot off with the charge attack, I would, you know, kind of uh, flee left. And I would start to notice that after about two or three times that I would flee left, he would start to charge right or charge straight. So, you know, it was kind of like a situation where we were both paying good attention to details. Right? So this is definitely a good build. So like I said, he also uses the Chaos Blade. So I'm kind of thinking that he is using a 40-40 intelligence uh, dexterity build kind of like I am. I don't know if you guys have seen the bird video where I basically discussed this, but this is my Crystal Magic Lioness build, a build that I have dedicated to using uh, buffs. Now, this is basically the first time that I've ever created a build that was dedicated to buffs, but, you know, as I have said uh, plenty of times in the past, you know, whenever you're doing a battle of the builds, you know, I don't mind buffs. But the thing is, the matches are over so fast, you almost don't give, you know, any build explanation any justice, right? Because we all know that based upon the type of weapon that you're using and ring slash equipment combination that you're using, in some cases you can kind of two-shot people with a buff, right? So even though I am using a uh, buff build... I didn't want to use buffs, right? So this is basically my 40-40 intelligence dexterity build. Now, I have a couple variations with this build. Um, one where I'm using the Halberd and the Velka's Rapier. And there's another variation where I use the Rickard's Rapier. Now, 
After a little bit of testing, if I had to do this build all over again, for which I'm really thinking about doing, I would use the um, S-Stock instead of the Velkas or the um, Rickers Rapier. And I'm really com coming to like that S-Stock. Now, I just did a couple vids not too long ago where I'm using the S-Stock. As a matter of fact, I was doing a lot of invasions with the S-Stock. And I really like that weapon. Uh, not only do I like it for, you know, the regular R uh, two-handed and one-handed R1s, but I also like it for the two-handed R2 attack. Right, so as a matter of fact, I think I'm going to rebuild this uh, character. And I am going to create it with enough endurance so that I am able to wield the halberd in addition to the stock. Mm -hmm. Now, one thing to keep in mind with regard to this build. Originally, it was supposed to be a um, catch pole build. And for a few of the guys that may have faced me in the, uh, what, undead, what's that, not undead, the Ulus Hill Township lately when I was using it. I mean, that weapon pretty much sucks, even with 40-40 stats. Now, I've kind of heard a few people say it's cool, it's strong, and it's all like that, but I don't know, maybe the experiences that I had is not necessarily the same as what other, pa other people may have had, but it basically sucks to me. And, you know, just having a weapon that you can only basically use the one-handed and two-handed R1 with basically little to no effective usage of the R2 really turned me off. Right, so whereas I uh, originally intended for this character to be an intelligence dex build, you know, one that would use the Chandler's Trident in addition to the catch pole uh, and the Velka's Rapier, I end up changing, uh, changing it to a um, Crystal Magic Weapon Lioness build. And I am actually very happy at the end result of this build. Right, because I think it's very effective. Not only am I good with the buffs, but I also have a uh, supplemental uh, option to use some magics. Right, so the options that I use for magics is I use uh, the Soul Spear. Uh, I have an I have an option for Dark Beat, for which I am not going to use the Crown of Dusk. I think, you know, for this particular build, I kind of want it to look like a female soldier. Right, I don't want to have the fairy ears be kind of, kind of, you know, the fairy ears kind of make you look too feminine. You know, even though I'm using a female character, I kind of want her to look like a female knight, right? That's why I selected the brass armor, but I kind of put on the steel helm in order to look kind of soldier like, right? And I am very happy with the result, very happy. Like I said before, if I had to create this build again, for which. I really think I'm going to. I would create um, create it with enough endurance to be able to use the halberd in addition to the uh, the S stock. All right, now if you guys notice his mighty fine usage of these charge attacks, and actually this build is pretty interesting, right? Because as a matter of fact, I think I'm going to try to contact him to find out his stats because I try to put this build together because I think it's kind of groovy. As a matter of fact, I think I might try to put one together uh, myself. I don't know if he's doing... Um, actually, I don't know what he's doing. But whatever he's doing is pretty effective. I really like the build. Pretty handy. Right? Because he obviously has a wolf ring. I'm not really sure if he's going... Um, seven, 73 and Vitality without a Ring of Favor Protection or if he's going Ring of Favor Protection and a Wolf Ring and he just is not going 40 and 40 so I don't know, uh, next time I get in contact with him I'll try to get the stats and if you guys are interested I can put in the uh, Mugen Monkey link for the stats for his build especially for a lot of you guys that are fans of the Bleach anime series alright so that was a good match right there GG he's firing up the silver pendant <laughs> alright and we're back at it alright so let's go ahead and do our gestures to mark the start of the match grass it up and we're good to go 
Now, one thing to take note of, I know a lot of guys are still having problems with the medium rolling. But if you guys pay close attention to my gameplay, you will see that I am not doing any unnecessary rolling. And I think that's one of the problems that some people may have with medium rolls. You guys notice that? I just attempted the parry for the charge attack. Now, unfortunately, I was, you know, not successful. But at the same time, in order for you to be successful, you're going to have some failed attempts. Now, um, like I was saying before, one thing that... Good to go. Double KO. Um, like I was saying... One thing that you can do with either the Darkwood Grain Ring or the Fast Roll that you cannot do at all with either the Medium Roll or the Fat Boy Roll. You cannot roll unnecessarily. Right? I know a lot of the guys, especially these Darkwood Grain Ring users, it seems as though they just flip just for the sake of flipping. I mean, I know I've seen some matches where somebody's like fi flipping like 50 times, it seems. Right? And it's kind of like, come on, dude, I'm not even near you. Why are you flipping so many times? And, you know, sometimes you can even get away with that by using the fast roll. Because I know just recently I was in a fight club with, I can't remember who I was fighting. And this guy rolled so many times that I just really got annoyed. Because, you know, I wasn't even near him. He was just rolling over and over for the sake of rolling over and over. So, you know, if you guys want to be successful with the medium roll, please keep in mind that you need to roll or dodge flip, whatever you want to call it, only when it is necessary. You can't just be rolling and flipping just for the sake of doing it. Now, once you get to the point of disciplining yourself with regard to, you know, the times you choose to roll, you know, you will learn to use your shield more. Or you will learn to two-hand and block with your weapon more. And insofar as you're able to get better at doing that, you will definitely get a lot better with the medium rolls. Right? Because it definitely takes some getting used to. Especially if you're used to doing a lot of, you know, dark wood grain rings slash uh, fast rolling builds. But medium rolling is definitely viable. I mean, I don't know how many videos do I have with myself doing medium rolls, but... You know, and so far as you have the correct uh, weapon, ring, and equipment combinations, medium rolling can definitely be a force to be. Oh man, I'm saying that wrong. Can definitely be a force to be reckoned with, especially when you're using the Leo ring. Right? I remember when I first did the counterattacking with Leo series. I kind of made it a point to stress that you know, for a lot of these guys that are medium or even tank rolling, you know. A Leo ring is definitely a viable option, right? Because whereas you may not have the maneuverability, you know, whereas you may not have the speed, you will definitely have the attack bonus that comes with the uh, counter damage, right? And if you guys will notice that a lot of my medium builds have the Leo ring, either the Leo ring or they are strength builds. Now, I actually have one fast strength build, but the other strength uh, builds that I have are all medium rolling because, you know, obviously they are able to wield some of the heavier strength weapons, you know, some of the ones that are like 22 and 24 units. All right, so enough about that. So, you know, good old um, Rikiyo is trying to pay attention to my patterns because if you guys would notice, He's doing a lot of unlocked charge attacks. You know, and a lot of people kind of sleep on those charge attacks. And, you know, one thing that I will say, uh, especially with regard to his performance with this weapon, um, I think he's kind of given the Moonlight Greatsword a good name, right? And the reason why I suggest that it kind of had a bad name is because I run into a whole bunch of gankers that use that Moonlight Greatsword. And all they do is spam that charge attack. Right, and I think with him showing uh, a different way at using it, obviously he's not ganging, ganking rather, but by using his methods, I think he's definitely showing a very good and powerful way to use the Moonlight Great Sword. Now, 
uh, before patch 1.06, I'm pretty sure a lot of you guys knew that that weapon could stun you like out of control. <laughs> right? Like, unlike the Claymore and maybe some of these others, that Moonlight Gray Sword could definitely not only stun you, but it definitely had a fast swing. Right now, um, although that was prior to the 1.06 patch, this definitely, this weapon is still a force to be reckoned with. Right, and I think good old uh, Rikyu is doing a good job at demonstrating that. You guys notice that? He's pretty effective with those beams. Because I definitely got killed a number of times with those beams. And actually, I should have kind of unlocked and hit him with that rolling R1. But, I mean, it kind of comes with the territory. Sometimes you just kind of got to practice. So I'm doing a little guarded... Um, Velka's Rapier attacking right there for 411 damage. And now he's pulling out his Chaos Blade. Now I wonder how much dexterity he has. I don't know if he stopped at 30 or 35. And I basically say that because he's primarily using the Moonlight Greatsword. So I'm assuming that he might be a 30 in dex with perhaps 40 and intelligence but I'm not really sure like I said the next time I have communications with him I'll ensure to you know kind of ask him for the specs to his build all right so we're back at it so once again for the rumble in the jungle slash battle of the builds for any of you guys that may have a unique build go ahead contact me on PSN Contact me, um, you know, I'm on the chats, on the twitch.tv chats pretty often. Go ahead, contact me on the chats. Uh, or, you know, leave a comment in the comment section. One thing that we like to do in the brigade is showcase a lot of these unique builds, right? Because, like I've said plenty of times in the past, we like to stimulate character build creativity. And, you know, I must give credit to where it is due. I have definitely seen a wide variety of builds lately. You know, whereas on the past on the PS3, you know, I run into a whole bunch of katanas. Nowadays, I definitely see a lot of variations with regard to builds. And I think that's definitely a wonderful thing. Um, now, <clears throat> I know that may kind of sort of be biased relative to my circles. Right? But, you know, I'm pretty sure... And actually, that was a mistake right there. You guys notice that he got hit by that tongue-lashing red creature. So we're going to go ahead and start up the match, right? Because um, we're not going to cheat anyone out of a win in the brigade. So let's go ahead and start back up. Pop of Humanity. I hit my Divine Blessing. Grass it up, and we're good to go. And that was, that was a good match. It was really going in a good direction. Alright, so he's going to go ahead and fix his weapon. I don't know if he's broken, but I do know he was using quite a few charge attacks. Right, and I don't know how much durability that uh, the charge attacks may uh, take away from the weapon. But we're good to go at this point. Alright, now, I, like I said before, I faced this build in the past. And before, okay, got a mid-rolling roll BS right there. And those mid-rolling roll BSs are definitely difficult to do. But, like I said before, I faced this build once in the past. And when I did, the mistake that he made was he allowed me to get too close to him and do those charge attacks, right? Which allowed me to parry him on a number of occasions. Now, this time, he's not making the same mistake. Either he's not making the same mistake or I'm just being a little too slow on the draw. Either way it goes, I think he does a very good job at, you know, kind of judging the distance with regard to deciding when he should and should not hit the one-handed and the two-handed charge attacks. Right, because for all of you uh, parry pros out there, I'm pretty sure you guys know. Uh, and I, not only parry pros, because I know uh, I parry the Moonlight Greatsword and I think... Uh, Let's see, I think it's Parry Instructions 103 that I did. I know I did a Parry Instructions 102 and 103. And I can't really remember which one that I showcased the Moonlight Greatsword parried. I think it's Parry Instructions 103. 
So in the event that you guys may be kind of new to the game and you kind of want to see the uh, R2 charge attack parry, go ahead, feel free to watch my parry instructions. I'm pretty sure it's a 103 video. Well, all right, guys, this is pretty much the end of the series featuring myself and Rikyu's, um, let's see, what's the name of that build? I think it's the Ichigo build. And I'll ensure to uh, put that uh, Mugen Monkey, excuse me, Mugen Monkey build in the description box. I'll try to get in contact with Rikyu. So I hope you guys enjoyed the build showcase. Until next time, Martyr's Brigade is out.